Good day, viewers. Welcome to another super cool pinball repair video from the Goat Shed. Today is Saturday, the 21st of January 2023. The sun's shining and the birds are singing today. Here's Graham in the background, busily working away. So, today we're going to continue with the repairs on Big Indian and we thought we'd share a few little things with you on the way, on the journey as we could say. And we're working on the front trip bank today. Now before we go on, once again could we remind you and ask you, would you please subscribe to our channel and give us the big thumbs up on our videos? Spanky would greatly appreciate that. Now we'll just have to readjust the angle of the camera here in a moment and just show you what we're actually doing today. So what we've done, we've taken all the armature plates out of the trip bank and Graham is now proceeding to clean these white rollers as best we can to ensure that they're spinning nice and freely and... Um, that means that the switches will roll nicely, or the switch blades will roll nicely over those switch actuators. Now these actuators are the things that can break. The uh, arms break off the side. We have made a video before showing you how to replace those. And at the moment we've got every armature out. We'll show you that in a moment. To clean them and make sure they operate smoothly. A big part of the problems with these particular banks is that the armatures don't move back freely enough. So you can see me moving this one here. That's springing down by the weight of the switches or the switches are, are too strong sometimes. See that one there? That's a, a sort of a fairly good example. You push down on those switches and you still get a little bit more travel. We like to try and minimise that travel where possible to make that bank run smoothly. Now just in behind here, you can see the coils in here. And remember, we'll be doing a target pool, 12 bank coil assembly complete in the future in a video, so anyone that wants to have a look at that. I'm sure you'll get some good tips out of that. Um, we've already, in part of the service, done the coil sleeve in the pl uh, and plunger, cleaned it up over there in the uh, trip bank coil, over there on the far left. Graham's hand's just in the road there. There it is, pointing to it. We do that on all of them. Now, you can see here we're cleaning these up. Look, they're, they're not perfect. You know, there's, what's this? 50-year-old well, almost, this machine, depending on one month in 73. it was, And no service like this would ever have been done on this. Now, remember, this is the one that had the really badly worn player unit parts and uh, the bonus unit under the play field had been flogged to death. So this machine's had a very, very hard life. And we want it to play as good as it possibly can for the new owner to enjoy for many, many years to come. So this all takes time. We'll just finish this off. Uh, we've already done all the score motor. There's Spanky over there on the score motor. All the score motor switches have been cleaned. You can see the tops of them there nice and shiny. So we had that new Dremel tool that John Peterson gave me and done all that. That made life pretty easy. Thanks very much for that, John. I think one great thing about this hobby is we all learn things off each other. People have different ideas and techniques that they share. And it's great. And the other good thing about it is most of this stuff you get, it's free. Free of charge to learn. Um, it's actually Saturday morning here as I mentioned earlier on and um, in about another hour and a half I'll be in uh, inside online with one of uh, Mark Gibson's fun with pinball coaching clinics. Uh, so it's Friday afternoon over there and uh, 
anywhere between I think about 3 and 5 p.m. across America and we'll be doing that and that's all free helps people out so we're still in the middle of doing all the relays here we've got them all higgledy piggledy <coughs> everywhere and this one was the one I left yesterday when we finished so that means I've got to start on the start on that one this morning to clean it all up <coughs> so we'll show you how we fit these armature plates back in and what we did to clean them so we've refurbished the chime unit as well the chime bars have been removed and polished up on the buffing wheel and we've fitted a new um, PBR chime kit in it's interesting to note this chime kit I think was bought second hand as it's the the bronzy colour which normally I don't think you'd find in a 1973 machine so this is more likely out of a what a late 60s game something like that maybe early or very early 70s my Aquarius is uh, this frame is is the is the chrome but we've done all that and that includes uh, fitting new new coil sleeves in there and um, you get new um, grommets and washers that sit under here so we've done a, a, a video before of how to rebuild a chime unit if anyone's interested um, just polishing them up makes them look a lot nicer I think you'll agree look that doesn't take long to do um, and the result is outstanding I think you'll agree so it's certainly well worthwhile going just that little bit of extra trouble to make things look nicer and we reckon that they sound better when they're being cleaned now that may or may not be true I don't know but that's just our sort of tilt on it, it, it yeah tilt yeah pinball machine tilt you get it um, on that yeah they do sound a little bit crisper and cleaner so let's go back now to this um, trip bank and we'll show you what we're doing with the armature plates now there's an armature plate there so we've cleaned up all this this little lip here is the part that rubs on the on the tab for the um, actuator clean those up we make sure that they haven't got any grooves or marks on them and they, they clean up like not too bad now you can see the process here the spring has got a hook on that's what he's doing now under there and then he just gets that spring and hooks it onto the frame you watch what he does with the next one so he's going to pick the armature plate up there it goes he operates it he fits it in it's it's not rocket science this it goes in easy obviously you pull them out the opposite way so um, and under the spring that's really bent goes up the top yeah okay did you hear that so the part that's bent it, it sort of becomes obvious it's sort of bent over that's the one that hooks <clears> on, <throat> onto the top part it takes a natural bend there you go there's another one bites of dust make sure they spring down and they're all coming down really snappy and cleanly so it's quite easy to do. Now, he's onto one of the um, the ones with the extra switches on the top now. And there's no difference. It's just that they're, they're different actuators. We recently done a game where three of those actuators were broken. Three. There was two... Um, armature, SB armature, uh, SB sequence banks in there, and uh, one on each, and oh, two on one and one on the other. Now remember, all the switches on this have been cleaned. We've already we've we've checked them for adjustment. Now, what does this actual bank do? Well. This bank has the last ball relay in it, which is over on the far side. Player two, player three, and player four. It has the ZB 
first ball relay, the game over relay. It has the last ball or XB relay. And it has the SB1 and SB2 reset control relays. The one on the far side here doesn't have a coil. See, I've got my finger down in there. That's the, the coil that works off a, uh, a series bar. That, that there is called a series bar, that bar running across there. So when that one trips, this one will trip. You watch when he gets it in. There you go, he just did it then. But we'll show you again in a moment. Now those series bars sometimes break away, they do, the little spot weld comes adrift and you've got to re-affix those. Uh, what's that stuff called? JB Weld. I think you can use something like that. There you go, he's, he's got it on, he's going to get the spring hook. Now not everyone uses a spring hook, but like I've said a hundred times, these spring hooks, let's lift that up and trip it. There it goes. They both go at once. And they both go at once. Can you see that? Beautiful. Well done. Okay. So job complete. Oh, now, cool. a very, very important thing that we must do when we close this down, we've got to make sure that the edges line up. So this edge has to line up with the top of that edge. And sometimes these are a bit tight. So what we're trying to say here, we've said this before a few times, that edge here, right here, that's the inside and that's the outside frame. They must be perpendicular. If they're not, you will get trouble. Switches won't close properly. All sorts of strange things happen. Beautiful. Okay, now we've just got to finish doing the relays on this. Uh, that is uh, cleaning and checking them. Uh, we've pretty well done the, the score motor. We'll check those um, holders too. Yeah, we're going to check those fuse holders. Normally on the Gottliebs they're good, but let's uh, let's make sure that that they are. We'll we'll get a meter on there and check they're them. Not, and they don't look too bad, but we'll make sure they're not loose. The fuses that, that is. That one's been in a while. The fuse has had it. Uh, that fuse, see, it's all oxidised on the end. So of course the fuse holder is so, as well. So, so the fuse holder is. Well, we'll clean that and we'll change it. The fuse. Um, bear in mind, um, we're going to have to refer to the schematic here because the fuse values aren't on there, or are they? Oh, these are too big, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, I've got, I've got them somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we've actually got that marking there. So we always but, check the fuses. But you can check that's a twenty-five volt because it's a different colour. Yeah, so that's that's it's correct. It's two-six volt. Yeah, that's right. Um, and and generally. Um, the fuse holder on the left is always the 25 volt fuse on the vertical when it sits like that in the machine as well. So that's important. Always check the fuse values. You don't want the wrong fuses in there. You often find the wrong fuses in there. Like I've got one here. Can't really read them. They all look the same, all right? Ah, uh, what's this one say? Ooh, can we read any of them? It's difficult. Yeah, they're all a bit oxidised. Oh, that's a 10 amp. Now, that, that's right. quite possible that was okay, but uh, there's one there that looks a bit sus. That's um, just as AGC on the end. Oh, the value's written under yeah, there. Under the rust. So, under the rust, so yeah. you can't see it. So, yeah, we'll change those and fuses. Yeah, that's it. So the other job we'll be doing a little later on this morning, uh, a new line cord will get fitted to this. We, we like to change those. We, we just buy um, at, the, uh, at the store five metre extension cord and we, we cut the, um, the, the female end off it and uh, uh, affix it to the, to the game. So this, this machine was a uh, dual voltage transformer as we can see here. Um, always one... When you see one peg like that, that that's a 110 volt one. It always sits back there like that. And remember, always check the wires are on there good. That's important. I mean, if you wanted to make that transformer look a bit better, you could put a bit of paint on it. But like once again, as I mentioned, the we're not going to bother doing that. Well, that's the motorboard 
now complete, ready to be refitted back into the game. The motorboard didn't present too many problems. The score motor itself was somewhat tight, but we'll operate that in a minute and show you how to operate the motorboard on the bench if you need to. We managed to refit the relay labels and a couple of the labels. We've cleaned all the switches in the relays and adjusted the relays. And we'd previously, earlier on, as you recall, did all the switches in the trip bank, trip bank up the front there. Now, just to show you what's going on there's the labels all back in the game we've got one of those staplers so we staple it down we try and tidy up all the all the wires as best we can yeah it's not perfectly clean it's not a restoration it's just a, a sort of a get it going we do like to be as make things as tidy as possible now, someone has gone to a lot of trouble and removed everything off the front door we mentioned earlier on. So we've attended to that and checked. There's a couple of wires that have been removed there. Now, here's the tilt panel. Oh, and we've fitted the, the label back on there. There's your new fuses. The other ones were pretty rusty. Did you, did you see them? They all had, they were all oxidised. So, cost of a fuse, we might as well change those. So, you notice we've got a jumper wire on there. So generally it's always looking at it this way, top left and bottom right. So top left is a, uh, a red white wire. And bottom left is, well, slate. It's probably dirty. Now, the way to check that is double check on the front door what wires are connected to the slam switch. But because we haven't got the front door plug in, this acts as a front door. So now what we can do, we can turn the machine on. We'll plug it in. And we'll turn it on. And you probably just saw the score motor move a little bit then, maybe you didn't. But now if we push any of the relays that start the score motor, it'll run and we like to hold the relay on for a few moments just to let the oil work in this has all been glued as i mentioned earlier this score motor was a bit tight but it seems to be working fine now so essentially what we're going to say is this score motor is pretty well ready to go back in score motor this motorboard's ready to go back in the game just looking up the back there right up the back against the coil stop we had to put a new coil stop in there um, it was all loose so while I've been working on the motorboard Graham's been in the background doing bits of the cabinet and all this takes time just the little things you wouldn't believe let's go and have a look what we've actually done in there so you can see so the front door has been hammer toned and all the bits that are on the outside have been polished on the buffing wheel just to make that look a little nicer there is actually no coin entrance plate on this because all the coin mechs have been removed so there's another plate we're going to buff up we've buffed up the plunger ball plunger and fully serviced that makes it just look that much nicer um, the owner has ordered some new legs, so this being the small door will be the 31 inch legs. Uh, that'll make it look a bit better. The cabinet's not in the best of condition, but you can get a stencil kit for these if you need be, and it can be painted. Whether he'll go to that trouble or not, I'm not sure. So there's the front door from the rear. You can see all the mechs have been taken away at some point in time. We often find machines in Australia like this. I think the operators didn't want anyone having a chance or an easy chance of putting them back in and earning money. Um, we've just got to 
get a bit of fix up where they, they'll just pull that green tape off there and fix that up on the way through. Uh, just mentioned a moment ago about legs. Uh, we're going to put new leg tees on this. We've just had them come in the other day. Uh, the on and off switch is broken. Maybe just have to go and get a toggle switch if we can find one. Uh, even we've had to take out each of the the uh, flipper switches and the flipper buttons. So they have, that's been cleaned on the or polished up on the buffing wheel. We cleaned the switches of the the flipper buttons and the inserts as best we could. Here's the one on the outside here. I mean, you can buy those new, we just don't have any new at the moment. We'll probably order some of them in our big parts order. Uh, and I mentioned the other day, we've cleaned up all inside the cabinet itself. It was pretty dirty, we blew it out. So it's nice and clean now. Nice and clean. So, that's what we're up to now. We've just painted the top arch. I think Graham might be putting all the hardware back on that. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so there's the apron all being um, painted. We're just fitting the hardware back onto that now. The hardware's just been buffed. Um, it's had a new um, rebound puck put on it there. When he holds it up, you can see that. Now that was undercoated then a spray of paint. The paint is an antique gloss white for anyone that's interested. Um, once again, maybe in different countries, paints are slightly different, but that's the one that we find works best for us. Now by painting that, it makes the world a difference. As you saw earlier on the play field, we did all the, all the rails up the side, we cleared those. Now we're putting this back together and um, when it goes on, it'll make it look, you know, a lot better than it did. So what we're up to now is when we've just finished doing this, we're going to put this motorboard back in the machine. Well, we already know the motorboard works up to a point, at least we've got power to it, what I should say, by doing that little test we showed you. And now we'll do the troubleshooting. So that should that's all the fun part. Alright, now we've fitted the motorboard back into the cabinet we've got the play field in the unit and we're just about ready to see if it'll start we have got power to it at the moment the back box is a light so that's a that's a start let's put it down now and see what happens all right here we go Okay, so when we press the credit button in, it's adding replays. So we're going to have to have a look at that. Oh, much. Okay, so that's probably, it's, it's set four players up, the but it hasn't actually started the game. The so not we haven't got a reset. So let's investigate that first up. So the problem appears evident. It wasn't completing the startup sequence. We just thought we'd have a visual look first. And what we discovered, we haven't soldered the wires back onto the bonus unit. These things onto the subtract side. So, there you go. We didn't check our own work. Let's solder that back on now and we should be pretty well good to go. Okay, now we've soldered the wires back onto the reset coil on the bonus unit. I'd say we can be pretty confident that should fix it up, so we'll restart it again. Just a little thing to show you though. Always put a rag down like we have done there. There's an old t-shirt, just to stop any solder that you might drop as you're doing your work down into a part, a part of the machine that you don't want it to be in. Now, because the bonus unit is right under the play field, we don't want it to drop it into a relay and cause us any unnecessary problems like a bit of solder falling straight down 
in between two lugs and causing a short. So that's a, a useful tip for you. I'm sure everyone already does that. Those that haven't, believe me, you don't want to get caught. Right, yeah, well here we here we go again. Um, what we found, uh, I think I mentioned, was um, we were having trouble with the reset and it still wouldn't reset after resoldering the wires onto the bonus unit. Um, what we discovered was, was that the player unit wasn't advancing. Now, I don't have a schematic here that I can show you. Well, I have one on my phone, but it's a bit hard to show you that because I'm using the phone to record. When the reset process is in motion, on this game, Z2 pulls in and resets player 3 and 4. When it's happy, it releases and then locks on Z1 and resets player 1 and 2. Well, that was happening, but the other thing we noticed, the player unit wasn't advancing. Now, it's quite, um, oh, I don't know, uh, coincidental, I guess, just the other day when I did a coaching clinic with uh, Fun With Pinball, uh, which was um, last Friday night in the USA, we had someone with a Bronco and their player unit wasn't advancing. Now, all the Gottlieb four players are very, very similar in their reset procedure. And when you look at the schematic, it is involved. I think there's about five or six switches that there are. But on this, we knew that the Z1 and Z2 were working okay. So there's player switch 5B, which is the running out switch for the player unit. There's only two switches on there. There's A and B. Well, we checked that. That was okay. We were pretty confident that was all right. The other two switches that came in to play were on the SB relay in the sequence bank at the front of the machine and player uh, score unit switch 1A. So we decided, seeing it was a pulsing thing, to make that score a uh, player unit advance using basic logic, it's got a pulse, 1A is a pulsing scoring switch, or not a scoring switch, a pulsing switch I should say. So that's where we first went and we just gave it a little bit of a, a clean, we'd already cleaned it but you know something might have, you know there might have been a bit of something got on it and away it went. So now we should be able to start the game up okay and test everything. and it's kicked a ball into the shooter lane. Now, anyone that was watching before, we mentioned that we heard the the knocker operate every time we pressed the replay button. At first we thought, oh, okay, um, there's no coin mix in this, someone's done a wiring thing. But when we had a close look at the replay unit, Spanky had soldered the wires back to front so in other words he put the add replay wire onto the subtract replay wire and vice versa it, it's easy to do um lucky we've been onto that i think everyone's done that at some stage of the game so they're the little things to watch out for you always often got to check your own work before you go diving into things and making things worse okay now we've got a ball in the shooter lane let's roll over some things on the play field and see what happens. Okay, so the top three lanes are, are, well, are working. There's a switch on the G, which might need a bit of attention. Um, we've got... Oh, well, we've got specials alight. That's because we got um, big out, I guess. And we should pay a, a replay. There it goes, it played one. And up come the drop targets. Okay, so we've got one of the star rollovers not working. And that's reset because it's a side lane. Okay, let's drain the ball and collect our bonus. Uh, 13. So it should be 13. 
34. So it paid the right bonus. So, so far what we know is, is that the switch underneath the G needs attention. We haven't got lights on the pop bumpers no, either. The B and G. Oh, they come with B, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so the G, the switch is just a bit dirty. Oh, it's oh, oh now it's playing on player four. Player four. See that? So that's not right. We'll go down the guts and start again, see what it goes. Let's have a look. Not nothing. That's okay. Okay, and when we drain the ball, nothing happens. So there's a bit more to have a look at here. Yeah. Let's investigate. Righto, so let's start that up again. We've found a couple of little problems. All right, it served the ball. Now, one of our problems was up the top there. The G wouldn't work. Now it's right. Now, we, now we've got another one up there not working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it must be just dirty. Just a bit dirty. Okay, the other problem was we had one of the star rollovers not working. That's working. That was just a switch. Now, the last problem we had was we had uh, the out hole when it drained. It wasn't doing a thing. So let's do that now. What we found with that out hole is that it's... Um, um, was just bent a little bit too far out. Now, it looks like we still have one more problem we've got to address, and when it advances the ball, it's going to play a two. Four. A four, I should say. Now, there's a strong possibility that there's a switch on the player unit that's touching. Not the player unit, the trip. Or the trip unit, trip bank as well. Well, it could be, two, could be either or. So let's investigate both those scenarios. Right, well, further investigating this problem where the player is not advancing back to player one and stopping at player four, uh, what we've discovered is a faulty switch in the score motor. Now, when I say faulty, um, what we found is that the one of the contact pads is actually spinning around, and we have that switch out now and we're going to attempt to remove that let's just try and illustrate that turning round i think that's pretty obvious isn't it so that's what the problem is now in the past just while we've got that switch that's motor switch 2b the actuator, which is that bit that Graham's got his thumb on there, we've actually had those broken away. Now, we've had a couple of those over the years. Um, now, that 2B switch does a few things in hold-on circuits. And one thing that we did notice early in the piece that instead of getting 500 points or 5,000 points, we were getting one less. So it's exactly the same as what it's doing to the player unit. Now, what we'll do with this, we'll take this switch out and we'll clean it and we'll solder it from the back. So if we have a look at the schematic, we have the uh, P, the add player unit relay, which is the one that pulls in when you roll over the trough switch. And here's the area of the schematic we're looking at. The P relay is here. P. But if we come here and start on this side, which is where we really should start, remember with a, with a electrical current we have to go from one side of the power rail to the other side or of the transformer. So to achieve that we have to pass through several switches. Now in this case the 2B switch is in circuit with the U relay, the P, the O, the Q, the V, the S and the W. 
Now, all those rely on it to be working. Now, we did notice earlier on, as I said, it was short scoring. Now, that's a sign of the hold-in or lock-in circuit not being effective. Now, with that pad spinning like it was on switch 2B, obviously it was going to lose power and subsequently there's a problem we could have. So, in order for the current to flow through here, it goes through the anti-cheat switch, motor 2B. Now, we're interested in the P relay, which was up here. We come across, it goes through motor 1C, a normally closed switch with a yellow and blue wire and a maroon and green. Through the trough switch, which has to be closed, and then, bang, it comes over to the P relay. The P here in that switch there, whoops, you can't see that, can you? Sorry, I'm not used to this. It's hard with schematics for me to get the camera right. Um, that's the hold on switch on the P relay. Now, if that switch wasn't working, it wouldn't hold on at all. So we knew that switch was working. So experience told us that it was losing a pulse for whatever reason. Sometimes it can be a misadjusted switch, a dirty switch. But in this case, it was this spinning pad. And that's on motor 2B. And remember, all those other relays, you can sort of see a big square here. Now, unfortunately, I'm not like Mark Gibson. I don't have the software that I can draw all this with. But you come down here and there's a big, well, not a square, but it goes all the way across there and, and comes out here. So you can see the, the 2B switch or the hold-on switch, which is normally closed. That opens by one of the studs on the score motor. Let's go and have a look at that now. Okay, so we've reassembled the switch in the score motor. While we had the switch out, you saw we cleaned it all with the Dremel and we've adjusted it. And one thing when we pulled the switch out, we noticed that it was... part of the pad wasn't touching the other half. Now, that was possibly because the pad was loose, but you've got to make sure that they're aligned up when you put them back in. So, like I say, we're pretty confident that we would have repaired that now. That switch would have been losing power. Um, you've got to look out for those sort of things. Now, we previously mentioned this machine's had a fair caning in its life. Uh, it's had a hard life, no doubt. And um, it's probably not surprising to see that. Those pads are particular problems in games around 76, like Sure Shot. We had a sure shot in here about nah, maybe three, maybe four year ago. And what was happening was the the motor was stopping short all the time on the return journey. Well, no, not all the time, intermittently. <clears throat> and, okay, we'll have a look at it. And it turned out to be a spinning pad on uh, motor 1C, the motor running out switch. So you've just got to, got to look out for those sort of things. Let's start this game up now and see what happens. Okay, so I've served a ball into the shooter lane. Let's score a few points. There we go. We're going to drain it. Ball's going to roll into the trough. Look at that. It worked. You heard it go click, click, click. Four times. Beautiful. All right, now, uh, what are we on, ball three? We'll just score a few more points on ball three. Um, in the meantime, we have fixed up the switches on the big and the star roll over. Oh, look at that, we're going to get a replay in a minute. Hear that, away it went. Drain that ball. Okay, we'll just uh, finish off that and get that up to ball five. And let's see it game over. Game over. So, just a few more things to do on this game now. We've got to uh, attend to one or two of those score reels. Yeah, so we looked at the score reels and we've just made a few adjustments to the switch stacks. And we're pretty well good to go now. The 10 point in player one and player two is playing up. And the player for the thousand was playing up. Now these have got those switch stacks in them where 
at zero, all switches are open. Nine, they're all closed, and one to eight, top and bottom are closed. Now that's a really different combination than what we're used to. Uh, now this first appeared in the late 60s, I think Dancing Lady had this, and then it came back in, well this is 73, 73, 74. And it's it's only it seems to be only with four player games. I, I can't a hundred percent confirm that. And and I have asked around to see if anyone knew why they did it. The switch stacks have got a slightly different configuration in respect of the white spacer. I'll endeavour to show you the white spacer. I've got a spare one. Yeah. Okay. You got one? Yeah. Okay. Um, the point is there. That's a normal one. Yeah. This is the more conventional Gottlieb score you'll notice that white thing isn't there on that bifurcated switch so it's just something else to to watch out for that could be tricky now we can have a look at this and we can see that um, it's going to score uh, the 10 points and it's carrying over properly uh, we haven't got the chimes hooked up in this yet. We've got to do some repairs to the the wires down there to put those in, but that's sort of not a big deal. Now, the other thing we thought we might do to this machine as well, we did notice that the feature lights on this, the BIG up the top and the B and the G over here, are all a little bit dodgy. So we'll probably put they're important. We'll probably put new lamp holders in there. They've all got bad grounds on them. And we have the new lamp holder, so we'll put them in. So all up, I think we've put in about 105 new parts in this game. That's roughly about 30 white posts, new white posts. And uh, what else was there? There was, uh, they added that up pretty quickly. There was, uh, oh, 30-odd coil sleeves went in it. So that's a lot of parts. That's the most parts we've ever put in a game. But as you've seen, this game has given us a fair bit of trouble. Nothing dramatic, but, you know, things you just don't expect. So with the new drop targets in it, it looks very nice. And now it sort of um, plays well. We didn't end up doing anything about the apron it's not too bad there it is but the the shooter gauge we we had us we've got a spare few of those so we did replace that we may consider doing something with the apron look we're not sure um how much you know do you put into these things so as i mentioned everything's now working we drop a target we roll over the Vera target works. All the targets work. How this works, if I light up the eye, all these will light up. See that now we've got 500 points and add bonus down the side lane here. Down the return lane, we've got 100 points or 500 point add bonus. So that'll take us up to 34. So everything's working nicely. Well, except for those lights, but we'll get the G out. So you can now see what specials are alight. Here, so if we were to knock all the drop targets down, we'll get a replay. Listen for it. There it went. Targets are reset, and if you're good enough, you can get them again. So quite a, quite a featured game, Big Indian, with Vera target, drop targets, what more could the connoisseur want in a game from 1973? Now, let's drain that ball 
ADZEP bonus and counts back to player one which is what we wanted and on to ball two so that's good that's what we wanted it to do let's just shoot a ball up with the plunger if I can reach under there there we go Under ball three. Pop bumpers have had those pop bumper kits in, so they're nice, nice and snappy. Down she goes, ball four. I'd hesitate a little bit. The ball mustn't have landed really well in there. This is on a bit of an angle in this front shed, which is typical. It's terrible. We normally do this in the in the back shed, but we've got a bingo machine in there, which isn't making life very much easy for us. Look at that. Couldn't even get a... And look at that. We've got a match. So there you go. We've got two replays in that session. One off the drop targets because we're lit up big. And then a match. And we've got a game over. So we're pretty happy with this now. So in summary, what have we done to this game? Well, we, we had a lot to do on this. You'll remember that uh, it wouldn't start. Well, that was our fault. We'd done a quick visual and found out we hadn't soldered the wires onto the reset side of the bonus unit and the bonus unit in particular we rebuilt it we actually had to put a new frame in because the the screw was flogged out from the um where the shoulder screw goes uh, now that could have been repaired a few different ways but we had a frame and that was okay because with the, when we put a new frame in we had to make every single adjustment on the stepper that you need to do the zero position the rest position after step and the position of the drive arm when it was fully engaged. So that was all entertaining. Now we've previously done videos on how to repair step units. Uh, we don't show you that here. We expect you'll go back and have a look. What else? We had uh, a bit of trouble with the switches up the top there, but that was just a little bit of oxidisation on them. We must have forgot to clean those when we had the play field out. That's all good now. We had the star switch up the top right there not working, the very top one. The reason was, was that the switch was bent just too far away, so that's all very basic pinball repair. Now, we had trouble with the out hole switch where occasionally when the ball would drop in the out hole, Nothing would happen. It wouldn't count the bonus. It wouldn't do anything. Now, there's a few scenarios for that. And, and one of the most common ones on a machine with a bonus unit in it is the bonus unit gets home, counts the bonus, but then nothing happens. The ball doesn't kick out. Well, in this case, when it landed in the out hole, it wouldn't even start counting the bonus. So it was something before that particular home position switch on the bonus unit. And... What we found initially that the switch was a little, had been sort of bent, twisted, and we didn't think it was making well. Why it went for a while, but then it stopped again. Well, what that turned out to be was another spinning switch pad on the out hole switch. And it was quite bad as well. So as we've illustrated in the video earlier with the player unit switch, we removed it took it out of the game, cleaned up the back of it, soldered it, and now it's as good as gold. Hasn't missed a boot since. So, talk about that. The, the most interesting problem we had on this game was the player unit not advancing from, on a one-player game, not advancing all the four steps through back to player one. It was stopping at player four. 
quite consistently. Now, earlier in the video, we mentioned that I have a schematic for this game, but it was on my phone, so I had an electronic copy. And then later in the video, we actually had the physical copy. I actually went and got that printed out to make it a bit easier to see, because on a, a phone, it's not that easy. And we did illustrate the problem we had with the player unit. It was the P relay, which is engaged when the ball rolls over the trough switch. The P relay was being held in, but it relies on switch, motor switch 2B as the holding or locking circuit for that. So in other words, that's supposed to stay locked in till 2B releases. But 2B had a problem where it had a spinning contact pad on the switchblade, really bad, as you'll recall seeing in the video. So once we took that out and repaired it, it hasn't missed a beat since. So overall, this machine has had a fair bit of work done to it, a lot of parts put into it, and we'll just do the changing of those lamps, and we'll do the... What else were we going to do? The lamps. Yeah, that's about all we've got to do. Oh, and fit the chimes, that's correct, yeah. So I forgot about that. So we'll do that and we'll test it over a few more days and this one should be pretty good to go. We're fairly happy with the, the end result of this. So once again, thanks very much for watching one of our videos. We hope you found this informative. This has turned out to be a rather long video. It's probably the longest we've ever done. Now we want to hear from you if you want to see more videos like this. We don't know what you want. We do what we think you might want. And in this instance, Big Indian is a popular game. There's quite a lot out there. Big Indian and what's the other one? Big Brave. And of course, we all spoke all earlier about how this was originally planned in the factory to be called Big Engine, but that was somewhat controversial in 1973. So don't forget to give us the big thumbs up for making the video for you. And please subscribe to our channel. We would greatly appreciate that. And this has been another Goat Shed presentation.